Good morning students. Today's lecture is on introduction to the health system research. At the end of this session, students should be able to define health system, define health system research, describe the development of the concept of health system research, describe the steps in various methods and designs in health system research. Health system is the organization of people, institutions and resources that deliver healthcare services to meet the health needs of target populations. According to WHO, health system includes all the organizations, people and actions whose primary intent is to promote, restore or maintain health of the people. Key functions of health system include oversight on the health needs of the population. That's very important in policy making and the regulation. Oversight on the health needs of the population. Health service provision like clinical services, health promotion, preventive services. Financing or funding is very important. Management of resources such as pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, personal protective equipment, skilled health personnel. All these are very important. What is health system research? It's a type of health research where results are closely linked to health system and it aims to improve the health system or health services. Initially, it was known as health service research. Now we can go through the definition of health system research. Health system research is otherwise known as health service research or health policy and systems research. It is a multidisciplinary scientific field that examines three components. One is how people get access to healthcare practitioners and healthcare services. It is about accessibility. Second component is how much the healthcare service cost and what happens to patients as a result of this care. So about accessibility, then about the cost factor of services, then what happens to patient as a result of this care from patient point of view effectiveness and patient satisfaction all these can be studied how health system research developed globally in 1967 a division of research in epidemiology and communication science was established for research work under WHO. In 1972, this division was restructured. That is, research in epidemiology and communication science was restructured into division of strengthening health services. And health services research responsibilities were transferred to division of strengthening health services because health services research helped to strengthen health services, right? In 1978, a global advisory committee on medical research and a subcommittee on health services research were formed. It was formed to achieve help for all by the year 2080 and implement the primary healthcare approach successfully. Primary healthcare approach was the tool to achieve health for all by the year 2000. Health services research or health system research aims at delivering primary healthcare that is comprehensive health care to all. What is comprehensive health care? It includes preventive care, promotive care, curative and rehabilitative care services. 
preventive care services for prevention of disease, promotive services for health promotion, curative service for early diagnosis and treatment, rehabilitative service for rehabilitation. What is the objective of health science research? It is to provide health managers at all levels as well as community members with the relevant information they need to make decisions on health related issues and problems they are facing. So provide information, relevant information or latest information to health managers and community members. Health managers include doctors, nurses and all healthcare workers. Okay. What is the use of giving relevant information so that they can make decisions on health related issues and the problems they are facing so that they can improve the functioning of the health system. Health system research is needed for what? For strengthening the healthcare and for identify and find solution for real field problems and to use variety of research disciplines. Okay. Health science research use variety of research disciplines and apply practical scientific knowledge for improving healthcare and health status. These are the steps or process of health system research. Okay, it is similar to the steps of community based research that we studied earlier. So first is define the research problem. I will give an example, diabetic care in Malaysia. Okay, define the research problem means maybe the problems faced by diabetic patients in Malaysia. Literature review. You have to look for all the previous study findings to identify what problem is more so that you can study. And you found out that the patient waiting time in diabetic clinics. Okay, generate a research question. Okay, is a patient waiting time is affecting the patient care in Malaysia? So one research question you have to uh, prepare. After that, you have to identify the research design. What can be the research design if you are studying the association between patient waiting time and uh, diabetes care, diabetic care. Okay, so it can be a cross-sectional study. Patient waiting time can be observed and you can uh, check for the patient's uh, diabetic control. Okay, then executive plan. You have to prepare a proposal for that. Okay, proposal is developed. After that, execute research project. You have to collect data on patient waiting time and diabetic care. Okay, diabetic care, you can collect data on uh, patients' blood sugar values, glycosylated hemoglobin values, all these values. Then execute research project. After that, you have to analyze and interpret the results. You have to do analysis. Data analysis is done. Then prepare the report. You have to prepare a research report. Then after that, you have to disseminate the result. How you can disseminate the result to other people, to the government or to the researchers or to common people. You can conduct a workshop or seminar or you can publish. You can publish in scientific journals. You can publish in a book. You can publish in newspaper like that. 
Now we will go through various research designs under health system research. Health system research can be non-intervention studies or intervention studies. Non-intervention studies means it is not experimental. These are observational studies. Non-intervention studies or observational studies can be exploratory studies, descriptive studies or comparative studies. Comparative studies are otherwise known as analytical studies. Intervention studies are experimental studies. Okay. It can be experimental studies, quasi-experimental studies or pre-post experimental studies or self-controlled trials. Now we will go through each one. First, non-interventional studies or non-experimental studies. First one is exploratory study. It is a small scale study of relatively short duration, which is carried out when little is known about a situation or a problem. So you are introducing a new vaccine to the population. You want to know the side effects of the vaccine. So it's a new problem or new situation. So you can do an exploratory study. It may include description as well as comparison. You can describe about the side effects faced by the people and comparison. You can compare the side effects of new vaccine with old vaccine. Approach the problem from different angles at the same time. That is known as triangulation. You can collect data from patients, data from doctors, data from health workers. Okay, you can use pilot studies. Pilot studies means small scale studies. You can collect data from 10 people and uh, prepare a report. Small scale comparative studies. You can collect data from 20 people getting new vaccine, 20 people from old vaccine, then compare the side effects. Descriptive studies. Descriptive studies means it describes the characteristics of a particular situation, event or case. Okay, particular situation is vaccination. So, uh, what are the physical characteristics, pain faced by the people, fever associated with vaccination, socioeconomic, like how much cost is there for the new vaccine, cultural, cultural means sometimes uh, some cultures may think that this vaccine may contain halal material, non-halal material like that. So cultural um, factors may be there in vaccination behavioral factors sometimes some people may may not like vaccine they may think that vaccine is not uh, effective or not needed all these things descriptive studies can be carried out on small scale or large scale small scale means these are known as case studies you can collect data from two or three people getting the vaccination that is small scale case studies Large scale can be survey. You can collect data from parents, data from people you know, who are taking the vaccines. Okay, or census. Census means we are collecting data from the whole population. Okay, data collected only once. So it is known as cross-sectional research. If data is collected only once means it's a cross-sectional research. If data is collected multiple times using multiple visits, it is known as longitudinal research or follow-up research. Okay, descriptive studies, data is collected only once. So it is a cross-sectional research. Comparative or analytical studies. Okay, it attempts to establish causes or risk factors for certain problems by comparing two or more groups okay some of which have developed the problem and some of which have not developed problem 
there are three types case control studies cohort studies ecological studies these are comparative or analytical studies now i will give some example for case control study case control studies means two group of individuals are there one group is known as cases other group is known as controls cases means they are having a disease controls means they are not having that disease okay one example i will give you we are looking for the association between lung disease with smoking so we are taking 50 patients with lung disease and 50 people without lung disease and we are checking how many of the lung disease patients are having smoking how many of the no lung disease patients are having smoking non uh, no, uh, normal individuals are having smoking behavior so one group are lung disease uh, patients other group are not having lung disease and we are checking for the presence of virus factor that is smoking among lung disease patients and among normal individuals that type of study is known as case control study it is an example of case control study cohort study there are also two groups are there one group exposed to a risk factor another group not exposed to a risk factor we are taking one group of people who are smokers another group who are not smokers and we are following them up for a period of six months one year or two year we are following them up how many of the smokers are developing lung disease how many of the non-smokers are developing lung disease that type of study design is known as cohort study ecological study you are selecting one state where air pollution is very high you are selecting another state where air pollution is very low then we are looking for the lung disease in in those districts or states where air pollution is very high and a lung disease in those states where air pollution is very low okay that is an example of ecological study okay we are studying the effect of an ecological or environmental factor on disease by doing comparison between two areas one area exposed to an ecological risk factor another area not exposed to ecological or environmental risk factor okay next is experimental studies experimental study means individuals are randomly allocated to two groups okay one group is getting an intervention or experiment while the other group is not getting that intervention or experiment outcome of the intervention is obtained by comparing between the two groups okay this is a framework for an experimental study design okay population is having 10000 people so from the population of 10000 i'm just giving an example a sample of 500 is taken using a sampling method we are selecting a sample of 500 from a total population of 10000 and after that selecting the sample of 500 we are dividing it into experimental group and control group if you are randomly allocating some people to experimental group and some people in the sample to control group if you are randomly allocating it is known as randomization so in this example total population is 10,000 we are selecting 500 from that using a sampling method from the 500 we are putting 250 as experimental group 250 as control group that is using randomization we are randomly allocating after that we have to collect baseline data 
from experimental group baseline data from control group okay it is similar to community intervention trial we are collecting the baseline data from experimental group baseline data from control group then you are giving an intervention or manipulation so okay uh, in this case experimental group is getting a anti diabetic medication okay and a control group is not getting an anti diabetic medication because sample is a okay sample uh, please imagine that sample is diabetic patients diabetic patients we are uh, randomly allocating to experimental group or control group so 250 diabetic people are in experimental group 250 diabetic patients are in control group experimental group get anti diabetic medication control group get no anti diabetic medication or placebo after some days we are collecting data on diabetic control from the experimental group and control group we are looking for blood sugar values and glycosylated hemoglobin values from experimental group and a blood sugar value and a glycosylated hemoglobin value from control group then we are comparing to know if anti-diabetic medication is better or not quasi experimental studies it is a non randomized experimental studies we are not randomly allocating to two groups we are just giving intervention to the group okay study group we are giving intervention and we are looking for after study group after then control group control group is not randomly selected one control group we select before the start of the study we look for blood sugar values or whatever variables we are studying and after the study period we are checking for the same variables after then we compare between study group and control group pre-test post-test experimental studies so that means there is there are no control group in this okay they are having self-controlled groups that means before the intervention we collect the data and after the intervention we collect the data from this uh, experimental group then we compare before and after okay i will give an example uh, 100 um, anemic anemic women are attending the clinic before starting the intervention we select the hemoglobin we collect the hemoglobin value from all 100 and the mean hemoglobin or average hemoglobin was 10 gram percentage okay you have you are giving an intervention of iron tablet for a period of six months after the intervention the mean hemoglobin value increased to 11 gram earlier it was 10 gram now it's 11 gram so we are checking for if the treatment improves the hemoglobin value or not okay this is an example of pre-test post-test experimental study otherwise known as self-controlled trial why it is known as self-controlled trial same group will act as the control or comparison before the start of intervention they are the control group after the intervention they become this study group or experimental group okay now we will go through various data collection techniques okay data collection techniques can be using the available information using observation interviewing administering written questionnaire focus group discussion projective technique there is one technique is there geographical mapping gis mapping or spatial epidemiology these are the various data collection techniques okay 
using available information okay we can collect secondary data secondary data means health management information system we can collect various information available in the government website or from the ministry of health website these are health management information system census all population data is available in census website you can collect secondary data from that ministry of health website you can collect data from there who website world health organization website have country data you can go to who website click on any disease click on malaysia then you will get all the data related to malaysia second one is unpublished reports okay government funded research some are unpublished so you can go to the researcher and collect the data from there institutional or student research sometimes some student research may have good data so you can collect it from the university or colleges grey literature it is not published so you can uh, collect data you can ask someone from other institution and ask or do you have any data on diabetes or any data on vaccination then they will tell yeah one researcher is having vaccination related research but not published then you can collect the data from there but it is not having much validity published data is having more value than unpublished data publication from journals or books you can get information newspapers you can get from websites of newspapers case histories you can get case histories are published in many journals case um, case studies case histories all these can be used observation observation is a qualitative method okay observation of human behaviors or health stuff okay you can observe how health stuff is behaving to people how health stuff is coming for work everything observation of various health activities you can go to the clinic and observe the uh, various activities done in the clinic observation tool is checklist okay checklist can be structured checklist or semi structured checklist structured checklist means you can just tick on it yes or no yes or no yes no or not sure like that structured checklist semi structured checklist means some opinion you can note down okay how the behavior anything uh, you can some open ended questions will be there you can note down that is a semi structured checklist interviewing interviewing is a qualitative method qualitative method means interviewing can be used to get opinion perception or um, expectation of people okay it is having high degree of flexibility high degree of flexibility means in depth interview with open ended question whatever the participant say will be recorded okay that's a in depth interview with a high degree of flexibility semi structured interview that means some questions will be yes or no some questions will be open ended question with a mix of open ended and a closed ended questions and some type of interviewing is low degree of flexibility it's a structured interview you are preparing a questionnaire with all choices are there all yes or no true or false is there you are just asking the question and they are answering yes or no true or false or whatever choice that is structured interview with multiple choice questions using closed ended questionnaire 
ways of administering questionnaire. Okay, how we can administer questionnaire? Sending by email and receiving by same way. But many times uh, people may not respond to email. Okay, another way is using online survey, using Google Forms. You can just send Google Forms link of the survey. So they will respond and uh, you will get the answer uh, in Excel sheets. Okay, that's very, very good. You can share Google Forms survey using WhatsApp, using Facebook, using multiple platforms. Okay. Hand-to-hand -hand delivering and later collection. You can give the questionnaire to the people and uh, will tell them, oh, I will come tomorrow to collect. Please fill it. Okay, that's, a, that's also possible. Then uh, last one, contacting a respondent and requesting to respond and return answers immediately. When you are doing community-based survey, you are going to the house and filling the information in the questionnaire. Okay, you are asking question and then just filling the questionnaire. Okay, so you are getting the answers immediately. Focus group discussion is a qualitative method. You can get the opinion of people, you can get the perception of people, you can get the expectations or open um, um, opinions of the people. A group of people, 8 to 10 people, answer the open-ended questions. Okay. Each individual are encouraged to answer. Facilitator makes sure that everyone express their opinions. Okay. Make sure that everyone answers. Recorder records the answer. Okay, please see the this picture and a facilitator will ask the question and everyone will get chance to answer that question. And one person, recorder will be uh, recording the response. Apart from the recorder person, we can use audio recording also. Audio recording of the responses. After that, the researcher will go back and will transcribe and translate the responses. Okay. Transcribe means they will write down each response by each individual. Then translate it. They may be giving in their own lo local language. We have to translate to English or whatever uh, language of the researcher. Projective technique is one technique of collecting data. Ask the participant to respond the hypothetical or incomplete question. Okay, one hypothetical question is asked. Suppose your child suffered from acute respiratory infection. What would you do? That's a hypothetical question, right? Parent may not be having that uh, suffering that problem now. But the question is like this. Suppose your child is suffering from acute respiratory infection, what would you do? Another one. Suppose one of your patient is positive for COVID-19, what precautions do you take? So this question can be used to know how much prepared they are, how much they are prepared for, to face that situation. Understood? Projective technique can be combined with other methods. It can be used in focus group discussion. Okay, I will give an example. Now you are going to a hospital. You want to know how much um, uh, how much prepared the health staff is for pro personal protective equipment. So you can ask a situation, a question like that, projective question. Oh, suppose uh, if one patient is admitted with COVID-19, well, what all personal protective measures you will take. You can ask um, multiple people and get their opinion. So focus group discussion can be um, uh, can be done using projective technique. Questionnaire also can have some projective questions. Okay. 
during interview also you can ask projective thing systematic or extensive review you can uh, collect all, all online available literature and to do a review of that review of published documents you can use, you can do a systematic review in a systematic way extensive review means you can collect all the research available on the topic and uh, prepare a review report gray literature review that is unpublished research or documents that also you can make a review of that you can make a review report review focused on analytical question some research problem you can focus uh, on the research problem collect all the research available and uh, prepare a review report meta analysis okay this is another technique which is employed in health system research what is that you know you are collecting multiple studies from multiple sources then you are collecting the data huh? uh, adding up the data from multiple studies and doing an analysis okay it's a systematic method of combining and evaluating statistical data based on the results of several independent studies there may be 10 studies are there you combine the data from 10 studies and you do analysis of that that is known as meta analysis okay produces a stronger conclusion than can be provided by one individual study okay if you combine the data from multiple studies and analyze it gives a stronger conclusion health system review that is another term health system review examines the specific approach to the organization financing delivery of health services in a particular country and the healthcare policies of that country so you can review the health system of a country so how to uh, do review of health system you can um, uh, study the organization financing delivery of health services in a particular country and healthcare policies of that country it make an assessment of the health system based on stated objectives and outcome with respect to various dimension so you can study about the health status of a country health equity of a country health equity means how equitable the health services are distributed okay all the races all the uh, categories are getting similar service or not that you can study quality of service what type of service is given to the people is it high quality or low quality service efficiency efficiency of the system can be reviewed accountability of the system can be reviewed some countries now we uh, we are seeing like sweden transparency is very high so some countries are having so much transparent system so we can know each and everything what the uh, health system is doing what is their future plan or what research they are doing everything is transparent some countries if you are taking some underdeveloped country transparency is zero nobody knows what what corruption is going on or what is going on in this system understood so accountability is also studied in health system review program evaluation program evaluation means you are uh, you are evaluating a health program so you can do uh, multiple methods huh? common technique is content analysis content analysis of opinions okay you are uh, conducting interview of multiple people involved in that program then you can do content analysis to find out what are the main uh, main findings of the research okay that's a done in qualitative research 
another another way of program evaluation is cost analysis cost analysis means uh, by studying the cost involved in the program or involved in the various health service activities cost utility analysis what is that incremental cost of a program is compared to health improvement okay how much cost is uh, used how much cost is spent on a program is compared to how much health improvement occurred expressed in in the unit of quality adjusted life years we can study the quality of life of the people how much improvement happened second analysis under cost analysis is cost benefit analysis cost benefit analysis outcome is measured in terms of money how much money saved how much money saved by the family how much money saved by the uh, community how much money saved by the government so outcome is uh, calculated in terms of money that type of analysis is known as cost benefit analysis then cost effectiveness analysis cost effectiveness analysis means how much money spent and how many lives saved or how many lives improved okay outcome is not in terms of money but in terms of life saved or life improved then next is cost minimization analysis that means different services have different cost right so method of calculating drug cost to project the least costly drug or therapeutic modality different uh, treatment modalities may be there one antibiotic infection can be uh, treated with penicillin or with a new generation cephalosporin so penicillin cost may be lower compared to new generation cephalosporin okay so we can uh, that type of analysis is cost minimization analysis for program evaluation they will look for the lowest cost but good quality or equal effectiveness so drug a is less cost drug b is more cost effect is same not different then we will go for drug a because it is having less cost but same effectiveness as drug b next is financing analysis financing analysis means government financing in health corporate financing how much money is spent for health like in budget how much percentage of budget is utilized for health corporate financing how much percentage of the expense is used for health benefit of the people private financing in health okay per capita health expenditure how much expenditure is given for per head catastrophic healthcare expenditure during disasters now out of the countries are going through the disaster right now now how much money is spent for the uh, healthcare of the people okay during disaster time these all are analyzed as part of health system research now we will go through the ethical issues there are so many ethical issues in health system research ethical approval and informed consent from people involved we are asking some sensitive information from health workers and patients and all okay so we have to explain about the research what it is done and why it is done and you have to get consent from them before their observation or the, their opinion is recorded respect to participant we have to respect the participant participant have full freedom to stop the research and go away huh? um, uh, discontinue the research they have the full freedom autonomy of individual participant to participate 
they can agree to participate or disagree to participate. Okay. Explain the benefit and risk of research. If there, uh, there is some ris uh, risks are involved, you have to explain the risk to the participant. Dissemination and publication of results. We cannot publish the name of a participant or identifiable information of the participant. So confidentiality should be maintained. Then comes conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is a very interesting uh, term. We will see in detail what is conflict of interest. Okay. Limitations. There are some limitations. Okay. Difficulty in randomization and equal participation of subjects. Okay. We cannot uh, many times randomly allocate a sample to experimental group and a control group will be a problem. When you are explaining about the result, person may not agree to be in experimental group or in control group. So they will discontinue the result or disagree to participate in the research. So difficult in randomization and equal participation of subjects. High turnover. Sometimes your study period may be 5 years, 10 years. So retirement of people, transfer of subjects, change of job, change of residence, all these can happen. Cost and benefits of research. Sometimes cost of research may be very high, but benefit of research may not be that much high. So that's one limitation. Scarce resource or lack of funding. Now the funding may be there. Maybe after one year government funding may reduce. So uh, your research may get affected by that. Access or permission to obtain data and for publication and dissemination of results. Okay, when you are doing a health system research, you are collecting data from government hospitals, government clinics and patients attending government hospitals. So you have to get ethical clearance from government. That is medical research ethical committees there, Malaysia government. You have to get approval from them and you have to get NMRR register number that is National Medical Research Registry. You have to register there. So access and permission to obtain data that is very difficult. You have to wait for three to four months to get permission and for publication and dissemination of results. Sometimes your result, uh, results may have some sensitive information. So government may not allow you to publish it. Okay, understand. So these are the limitation of health system. Now, as I told you earlier, conflict of interest. Conflict of interest means it's a very interesting uh, topic. Conflict of interest is a situation in which an individual have competing interest or loyalties. Okay, if a research is funded by a tobacco company and the research finding is showing that tobacco is very harmful. So tobacco company has funded the research. So they may not allow you to publish the research, uh, results, which is against the tobacco company. That's a conflict of interest. Okay. A researcher whose personal interests conflict with his findings in the research. The researcher may be working in a company. So you give his finding is against that company. There is a conflict of interest. It may not get published. Okay. That finding will be hidden. Okay. Funding organizations interest conflict with the research finding. Sometimes pharmaceutical companies research. Okay. Your finding is that that drug is not effective. Then pharmaceutical companies may try to modify the result in a way that it shows that it is effective. That's a unethical conflict of interest. 
financing issues and the quality of research okay funding from industries so there is financing issues are there we uh, researchers are getting money from the company so they are forced to agree to the uh, suggestions by the company disseminating and publishing of the result selective publishing of results based on the suggestion of funding agency funding agency may tell please don't uh, don't do uh, publish that negative finding you uh, give the positive finding like that conflict with the government's regulations policies programs and interests sometimes your research may find that oh there is some problem in government funding or government this one if you are funded by government you cannot publish that because before publishing you have to get approval from the funding agency to make sure that the results are not uh, conflicting with them okay that's a conflict of interest now conclusion okay health services research or health policy and system research and public health system research are very close terms with the health system research so all are different terms please keep in mind health services research health policy and system research and public health system research these are all health system research health system research is influenced by global politics and investments rather than its own philosophy okay many times we have to um, global politics is also there involved and the government's decisions okay government's decisions to give more funding to health or more funding to some other area that all affect the health system research thank you